pull-ups and dips are not for beginners. For most people, these exercises will only lead to frustration or injury. I will show you what to do instead so that you'll automatically be able to perform them perfectly later on. Generally, the fitness industry portrays bodyweight exercises as suitable for everyone and easy to perform. Most people think that because no weights are used, these exercises are natural abilities that anyone can easily do. It doesn't help that many trainers also refer to them as beginner exercises. So there is this common set of beginner calisthenics or street workout exercises, push-ups, pull-ups, dips, various squats that anyone can start with and quickly succeed at. You also hear this in many videos with titles claiming these bodyweight basics are totally suitable for beginners, which is why many people dive into exercises like pull-ups and dips. However, in my experience, this is far from the truth. Even people who are well trained and more experienced often can't do proper pull-ups and dips, let alone beginners. Think about why, for example, in CrossFit, they often do these dynamic pull-ups. It's because there is momentum involved and it's easier to do many reps with it. Where there is momentum, in this case, there is no full range strength. To succeed, you have to transform the control and execute the exercise with proper technique. Maintaining the dynamic technique allows for more reps, which people often reach faster than strict, properly executed pull-ups. That brings me to the other important point. They wouldn't be able to do as many strict pull-ups, even in the version where the chin goes over the bar. Not to mention that if they perform the full range chest-to-bar pull-ups, it would be even harder. So this story already tells you a lot. We are trying to turn a non-beginner spectacular exercise into a beginner exercise, but only through shortcuts with questionable levels of success. Those who start bodyweight training and attempt these exercises soon realize they aren't as easy as they thought. But they don't know what to do next and they believe the problem lies with them or worse, they keep pushing and end up injured. Dips, for example, frequently cause shoulder injuries due to the insufficient shoulder mobility or lack of proper scapular control and stability. With pull-ups, it's often a lack of grip strength or incomplete execution, leaving people stuck, unable to progress, and they can't move on to exercises like the muscle-up. Because of these issues, I quickly come to the conclusion during my coaching career that pull-ups and dips need to be separated from the foundational process and you should focus on other exercises first. That's why I split this process in two. After joint preparation, which by the way, most people completely skip, we begin with push-ups and inverted rows as pushing and pulling exercises. Only after mastering these do we move on to dips and pull-ups. Push-ups are much easier and quicker for people to learn as they develop the pushing structure in a simplified horizontal plane where you're only moving a percentage of your body weight, not the full amount. The same goes for inverted rows, which train the muscles necessary for pull-ups and help people master the full, perfect execution of pull-ups later. If someone learns these exercises properly, they will immediately be able to do a few dips and pull-ups. This shows how much difference it makes when someone trains consistently and gradually builds up. I always say it as a rule that you have to break down the exercises to their fundamental movements. That's why we start with joint preparation, where we first learn to isolate the specific body parts, muscles, and how to use our body, building better body awareness. This allows us to develop everything from the ground up so that the basic exercises become much easier thanks to the previous steps. If, for example, I could instantly give someone who's struggling with pull-ups as a complete beginner all the preparatory steps they should have done, they would immediately be able to perform pull-ups without needing any further progressions. That's the power of preparation and fundamentals. So the main point I wanted to highlight, and that's why I made a separate video, is that dips and pull-ups are unfortunately not beginner exercises. Before doing them, you should do proper joint preparation, followed by push-ups and inverted rows, and only then should you dive into dips and pull-ups. Otherwise, it will be much harder for you. But if you follow the prior steps carefully and reach a level safely, these exercises will then come automatically at a stable level. I know this might seem overly complex or difficult at first, but believe me, if you follow the right plan, it will make the whole process less frustrating, less disappointing and less injury prone, allowing you to reach your goals more easily. The only major difference between you and someone further ahead on this path is that they follow the more thoughtfully planned process. If you want to follow the same path that I, 
and thousands of my students have taken and saved years of trial and error, click the link below. Learn to control your own body and stand out from the crowd with your physique and superior technique because believe me, very few people can perform these exercises with the quality that you will achieve by following this system. If you want to get the most out of yourself and support your progress with irreplaceable help, personalized guidance, constant feedback, and 24-7 accountability from an expert, apply to one-on-one -on -one coaching. Otherwise, if you want to work at your own pace using the same well-structured system, just click the link below, join the Gymnastics Method community with the app, and get access to all my programs, tutorials, daily workouts, and much more. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and now check out one of my earlier videos on the end screen.